We begin in Gaza, where the Israeli military has withdrawn most of its troops from the Khan, Air, Khan Yunus area in the south. However, it has left one brigade behind. It's unclear what's behind the move, but Israel said a significant force would continue to operate in the rest of the Strip. It comes six months after Israel launched its war on Gaza in what the International Court of Justice says is a plausible case of genocide. The assault began after Hamas attacked southern Israel on October the 7th, killing more than 1,100 people. Since then, Israel's bombardment of the Strip has killed more than 33,000 Palestinians, nearly half of them children. Most of the population, around 1.7 million people, has been displaced. Another round of ceasefire negotiations is set to resume in Cairo on Sunday. An Israeli delegation will attend, and Hamas has confirmed it is also sending representatives. Let's bring in Rory Challens. He is in occupied East Jerusalem for us. And Rory, first of all, let's talk about this troop withdrawal. What are we hearing Israel saying about the decision? Well, basically, there is just one brigade of Israeli troops left in the center uh, of Gaza, the 98th Division, which has been doing so much of the fighting in Khan Yunis for the last four months, has been uh, withdrawn. Now, the justification is not official, but it's being talked about in the Israeli media. And essentially, what the reasoning behind it is, is that the Israeli military believes that that Khan Yunis operation has been satisfactorily completed. The 98th Division now needs rest and recuperation, and the Israeli military thinks that the best model for its future uh, campaigns and, and missions in Gaza is more small-scale raids that are intelligence-based. Uh, and the positioning of the Nahal uh, Brigade right in the middle of Gaza means that it still splits the strip in two. It stops people who have been displaced from the north to the south going back uh, to their homes, which the Israeli military at the moment doesn't want them doing. Um, so... It allows the military to do those raids north and do south, but maintain a very minimal uh, footprint in, in Gaza. What does this mean for the Rafa operation? Well, of course, it doesn't rule it out, because any big assault on Rafa would need a, a, a big call-up of reservists anyway. But it does make it more uncertain, and it does perhaps push it further into the future. Benjamin Netanyahu who has been promising that it will still take place, but, of course, he's under significant international pressure to uh, either cancel that operation or reduce its scope significantly. He's saying it's going to go the head, but he hasn't pulled the trigger on it yet. OK. And, Rory, what are we hearing about this delegation going to Cairo for another round of negotiations? Mm. Yeah, I think there's perhaps a sense here that there is more momentum behind this particular round of negotiations than there has been for some time, at least. Why do we get that impression? Well, it has been announced today that a high-level uh, delegation of Israelis is going to Cairo. It's leaving and it is going to be engaged in those talks later on this evening. It's going to be made up of... David Barnea, who's the head of Mossad, it's going to be made up of the head of Shin Bet, the internal security organization, and it's going to be made up of military representatives too. We understand that that delegation is going to Cairo with what is being described as an expanded mandate. What does that mean? Well, this is how it's been uh, talked about on Israeli media. That expanded mandate means that this delegation has powers of negotiation. Now, previous delegations that have gone to Cairo have gone with very fixed parameters that have been set by the Netanyahu government, essentially just to go to Cairo and to listen, but not to partake in actual negotiations themselves because the negotiating, the, the position had been set uh, back in Israel. This delegation goes with more powers than previous delegations uh, have gone with. And that suggests that there may be a bit of momentum building behind this. Now, Netanyahu is saying that it is not against a deal, uh, but it is not going to surrender to Hamas. It says that any surrender to Hamas, Hamas would essentially allow for another October uh, the 7th. Still big gaps between 
what the Israelis think is acceptable and what Hamas thinks is acceptable, but perhaps a bit more hope than in previous rounds of negotiations. OK, Rory, many thanks for that update, and we'll keep an eye on those negotiations as they get underway in Cairo. Thanks very much.